In this tutorial, we are going to take this photo and we're going to remove that dark distracting area in the background, smooth things out a little bit and turn it into this photo. As you know, if you've been using Photoshop for any amount of time, there is a thousand different ways to do 10,000 different things. And removing distractions is one of those areas. There are so many powerful distraction removal tools inside of Photoshop, and I, I recommend getting to know them as well as you can because there's some amazing things you can do with them. But at the same time, sometimes there can be a very simple process of an easy selection of an area and using one area of the photo to patch another area of the photo that can work out really well. And sometimes it's a combination of all of them. So let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial here and I'll show you a concept that I use all the time, especially on my wild day photos, on the backgrounds in those photos. This is a technique that I use quite a bit. Now I'm in Photoshop. At this point, you would have done all of your raw edits up until now. Okay, so whether it's Lightroom or Camera Raw, whatever you're doing before you get into Photoshop, you would have done all of that. Um, for those of you wondering, well, you know, I, I wish Lightroom would include some better cloning and healing. It, they could, but I, I wasn't happy with it when it came to the healing. I tried to do some healing brush adjustments up here, and I just wasn't happy with the splotchiness of it. Okay, so for me, even having cloning and healing wasn't going to work the way that I wanted to in this photo. Just so you know, I also did go down the path of making a selection like so and going to uh, content aware fill in Photoshop, which is excellent. Again, it just, it, it took me, it took me too long to get this to what I needed to. So by the time I did all that work, I found it easier just to take a, just a lasso tool, just a quick selection tool here. And I found it easy just to make a lasso selection of a good part of the foreground. Okay, so kind of along the lines of, of what I'm doing here. So something along, something right there. Um, what I did from here is I just pressed Command or Control J to make a copy of it. So now I have that whole section on its own layer. And then I went into Edit Free Transform. Okay and then I'm just going to expand it. And you can hold down the shift key and that'll let you, you know, con uh, unconstrain it. It's gonna be constrained uh, to the original proportions, but I'm gonna move it up and I'm gonna hold down shift and slide it over something right around there. I can even rotate it around a little bit to help fill in some of those areas. So something right around there. I'm not too worried that I'm not covering that up because I'm gonna show you how I would clean it up in just a second here. So I'll go ahead and I'll commit that transformation. And then from there, I'm gonna add a layer mask to this layer. So we'll just go down to the bottom of the layers panel, click on the layer mask icon here. And since the layer mask is white, the only thing I can do to affect the layer mask is paint with black on it. So I'm gonna press B for my brush tool, uh, set my foreground color right below at the bottom here to black. I'm gonna hit the right bracket key. And the key to this is using a pretty large feathered brush. So when you look at my brush settings, you can see the size is pretty large and the hardness is all the way down to zero. So that is a very soft brush because it's it doesn't have a hard edge to it. And again, I'm even gonna go larger on the brush size here. And I use the brush edge a lot. That's how I get a lot of these changes that I make to fade in well, is not to just go over and brush like that, but instead use the edge of the brush. Because the edge of the brush, since especially since you're using a feathered brush, the edge of the brush is just going to have more of a, a softer type of a feel to it. So I'm just going to paint away that nice hard seam that we see through there. All right, I'm gonna get it away from most of the, the bird as well. And then what I'll do is zoom in on it and get myself to a point where I can use a smaller brush. So I'll just hit the left bracket key, use a smaller brush and go paint away. Then use an even smaller brush, paint away left bracket key even smaller. I'll just keep painting more and more away as I get and as I as I as I make that brush smaller, I'm going closer and closer to the edge. Since this is a soft blurry background, you would never notice the difference in what we're doing here. Even though I'm not I don't have a perfectly selected edge, I don't need it because that background is so soft. Okay? If this were a harder, more cluttered background, this technique wouldn't work as well. Okay. So, get back out to full view here. So that's looking pretty good. Left side looks good. The right side, not perfect. 
Could we have gotten there by manipulating that, that large patch that we created? Possibly, but it's also just as easy. I can make a new layer. Now I can go over to my healing brush because I've given my healing brush a lot more area to work with. When I had this, my healing brush was lacking in an area to sample, okay? But now that I have a nice, big, open, even area with this, now I've got a lot larger area to sample. I can hold down Option or Alt with the healing brush, not the spot healing brush. So with the healing brush, I can Option or Alt click to sample, okay? And then I can come up here and just paint in those areas, okay? Same thing, I might even sample down here and paint in that little darker spot that we saw over there, but something along those lines. And you can see it just does a nice job of smoothing that out. You can see that's what we started with. That's what we finished up with. So I just made that background a little bit more even instead of having that dark area at the top. Now is a perfect time for a very, very quick word from our sponsor, which is always me. I have a course on wildlife editing secrets. So if you like what you saw here, my course dives way deeper into everything about removing distractions in your wildlife photos, working with light, working with skies. If you think about it, a wildlife photo is taken outdoors. We have so many tutorials on how to edit landscape photos. And in a way, a wildlife photo is sometimes even harder because we get even less control. Not only do we have no control over the light, but now we're also incorporating action and high ISO and all those different topics into it. So I do hope you can swing by the website, check out that course if you are interested in wildlife photography. Now this is another common one that I come into, especially with some horizon lines and whatnot. So what's happening here is there's there's a subject that's in front of water, but this water that we're looking at is actually only a tide pool, okay? So what you're seeing behind it is more sand. I'm down low to the ground, you're seeing this tide pool, and then there's more sand in the background, and, and I don't like that. I want it to be all one consistent color. Of course, again, I could go in here and I could crop in on the photo, and do something along those lines. To me, it's getting a little bit tight up at the top there, so I wanted a little bit more space. So I'm gonna use a very similar technique. I'm just gonna use the rectangular selection tool here. I'm gonna make a rectangular strip selection right along those lines here. Not gonna to worry too much about the top because the top is gonna to go away. So I'm gonna leave some space. I'm not gonna bring it all the way down to the bird because this time I'm gonna to go to select modify feather. I'm gonna feather that by about 25 pixels, which is gonna soften the selection edge. And then I just pick up where I did before, press Command or Control J, and now I have a copy of that strip on its own layer here. And now I can just take my move tool, move it up a little bit, maybe right around there. I know there's a little seam there, we're gonna take care of that. But that just moves it up a little bit. I can also go into free transform. Honestly, I don't think I would need to in this case, I'd be okay cropping that out. But if I did, if I needed a little bit more canvas space up there, I could go up there to edit free transform, hold down my shift key and I can stretch that a little bit. Again, depending on the background, you may be successful in stretching it. You may not be successful in stretching it. So you just have to play around with it a little bit, but there's nothing saying that number one, I can't go down in here and maybe crop in a little tighter on this. Again, I didn't want to crop all the way down. I wanted to leave enough space up there, but something along those lines. And then just like before, I can add a new layer, go over here to my healing brush, hold down Option or Alt, and that will sample, and then paint. And my mode right now is set to replace Replace is gonna be good for hard edges. It actually works better in normal mode when you've got soft areas like this, which is what we're talking about in our backgrounds, uh, and especially in this case. So I'm gonna option or alt click, and now I'm just gonna paint along some of these areas. You can see it picked up some other areas, so I'll option or alt click over here and go and paint that. Option or alt click again, paint. And between, you know, working a little bit of your healing brush and between option or alt clicking a few times, you should be able to do a nice job of getting rid of some of that seam that we saw in the background there. And you can always experiment a little bit with opacity, but really the main point here was con you know, all, all of the distraction removal tools can be amazing, 
but sometimes they don't do what you want them to do. And in that case, just using a very simple technique of patching one area with another area can work out really well. I know I did mention uh, content aware fill earlier in the video. I've got another video you might wanna check out that'll show you two different ways to use content aware fill. One of them's pretty simple and very quick. One of them's a little bit more advanced and you can see which one fits into your workflow.